verses 15 to 18 if you want to read with me, but it says, Then a spirit passed before my face. The hair of my flesh stood up. It stood still, that I could not discern the form thereof. An image was before mine eyes. There was silence, and I heard a voice saying, Shall mortal men be more than just than God? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? Behold, he put no trust in his servants, and his angels he charged with folly. So, the reason why I'm reading this verse is because the devil wants to destroy the chosen, and he's going to in a way called deception so (laughs) the big thing with deception is you don't know you're being deceived until it's too late and you're having to reap the consequences of what has happened um so a really important way that we can kind of be on the offensive with being deceived is always testing the spirits So, the way that we can do that is by judging if it matches up with what God's word says. Do these people have the fruit of the Spirit? And if they do not, we should ask the Lord for wisdom upon this and he will reveal it to us. And a lot of people can appear good because Satan comes as an angel of light, right? The way the Bible describes Satan isn't as like this big bad red dude with horns. No, he's beautiful. He was most trusted. One of the most high angels. That's what I mean to say, sorry. And he was proud, he was vain, and that is why he fell hard. And yeah, so he's not people that have ill intentions towards you aren't going to come out with direct I want to harm you type vibes no no they're gonna want to infiltrate seek and then destroy they're gonna want to get you vulnerable and then they're gonna want to disarm you so that's why um yeah you do need to test the spirits and be aware that the principalities and powers of this world are at work and they're very real so yeah I'm going to just flick on to Colossians chapter 2 verse 18 and it says, Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshipping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. We need to even test the thoughts that come into our mind that is taking captive our thoughts, testing the spirit behind what we are thinking. Is it vain? Is it prideful? Is it selfish? Is it hateful? Does it go against the fruits of the spirit? Does it come from God? Or is it coming from something else? Is it coming from our own sinful nature? Or is it coming from even something potentially demonic? The devil wants to destroy the chosen, and he's going to try and do that in multiple ways, in very subtle ways. The devil plays for the long run. He wants to destroy everything from the inside out, so we just, especially as we are in the last days, we need to keep our guard on a hundred. We need to be sober, awake, and alert. Because the devil prowls around like a roaring lion. So we need to guard our heart. And that is biblical as well. To guard our heart. And we need to put on the armor of God. Now, if you don't know what the armor of God is. Let's go through that. 
as we are in the last days. Whether you believe that or not, it is factual. Prophecy is being fulfilled before our very eyes, and it is clear as day that the devil is ramping up in his schemes. He's becoming less and less covert, but with the every day-to-day stuff, like relationships and things like that, his little devils will continue to be sly and sneaky. That's why praying and asking God for wisdom and discernment is crucial in this life, regardless of what timeline we are in, whether you are in Jesus' time or now. Ask for God's will to be done in your life. Because just as I said before, if you invite something into prayer, if you allow yourself to be vulnerable with God in all facets of your life, laying it at his feet, you allow him to give you protection over that. Because our Father is so, so good. He's not just going to give you, but he's also a gentleman. He's not going to start touching and messing with things in your life if you don't want him to. And my final um, Bible verse I've got here today is also 1 John, but it's chapter 4, verses 1 to 6. So this chapter is also titled, as well. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God, and every spirit confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth, and the spirit of error. So, this isn't just for people. This is also for messages, for sermons, and for information that may be fed to you. Do not allow yourself to be spoon-fed. Do not allow yourself to believe every piece of information that you read, that you hear. Because our eyes and our ears and our mouth are portals, 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 they're gateways where the devil can use these portals to deceive us to get us off on the wrong track and it takes one wrong bit of misinformation for us to start veering off more and more and more away from God's truth so that is why testing the spirits also means bringing it back to the word what does the word have to say what does God's voice have to say So you always need to take it back to scripture as well. And what the scripture says about the fruits of the spirit too. So I'm just going to leave it at that that little message, but important message, especially as we're in the end days. Every, it seems like everything is just misinformation. So be stuck in the word. Take it to God. Allow the Holy Spirit to show you what is right and wrong through wisdom.
wisdom and discernment and allow the Lord to be involved in your life through prayer, through giving it to him, discussing things with him in prayer. And from that, he can put his hand over it and say, I've got you. No one's going to mess with you because you've allowed me into this. You've allowed me to do my will. So, yeah, I hope that this encourages and um, potentially enlightens some of you or just reaffirms what you've already known and just, yeah, maintaining the armor of God on yourself every day before you go to sleep, lock and key.